Łukasz Śmigiel, w studiu ze mną y, pisarz thrillerów, horrorów, kryminałów, Graham Masterton. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to talk with you again. Uh, and and it's, it's great that you're in Wrocław again. Uh, and uh, I have to start this conversation, uh, it seems not with a horror story yet, but uh, I have to ask you, is, is it really true that you are going to have a Wrocław dwarf? Uh, yes, I'm afraid it is. Well, not I'm afraid it is. Uh, first of all, when they said to me, um, you're going to have a Wrocław dwarf, yeah. you know, I was very flattered. But um, then, then they said it was going to be a gnome, you know, like a dwarf. Mm -hmm. And I said, any chance of a full-size statue? <laughs> you know, perhaps in Rheineck I could be standing there. If, all know. right. But they said, no, no, we've only got enough, only got enough bronze for a dwarf, so... <laughs> that you'll have to put up with that, and everybody likes it. Everybody yeah. loves the dwarves. Yes, yes, they are. They're, they're going to give me a dwarf. It's a great honour mm -hmm. because I love Rotswaf. I feel very much at home here, and I'd just like to say that to be able to return here after two years because of the pandemic, it's been two years, um, is is fantastic because I love the people here. I've got lots of friends here, and not not just old friends, but some new friends as well. Well, k kids love dwarves, so they are going to love you as well. Uh, it, it seems. C can you? D do you know already? I is there is anything special about this this statue? Do, do you know some? Yeah, I've, I've like seen it. I've have seen a picture of it. Yes, there are about six hundred dwarves, aren't there, all together? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, easily it's impossible so I'm, to imagine. So I'm joining the crowd, but uh, this particular one shows me holding a book. And out of the book, it's based on my my first horror novel and the first horror novel that was right. um, published in Poland mm -hmm. um, after the end of communism uh, was the Manitou. And I'm holding a book, and out of the book is jumping the uh, the, the spirit of the Manitou. So Great! Yeah, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a good. It's been very well, and I'm wearing a very tall, pointy hat. <laughs> So, as gnomes have to, don't they? It's gnome uniform. So as a writer in, in a city uh, such like Wrocław, is it like, uh, because you, you travel a lot, I, I don't want to think about this pandemic time because it's very mm. difficult uh, to, to travel a lot, but, but writers travel a lot and probably you go from a city to a city. Is it like uh, in every city, you can find some inspiration. <clears throat> oh, of course. I mean, almost every, um, almost every Polish city I've been in, I've found inspiration, and I have been very lucky to be taken almost all over Poland. I've been to, you know, Bielostok. I've been to Gdańsk and Gdynia, mm -hmm. Czestochowa, Krakow, Katowice, Poznan, Szczecin. If I've pronounced that properly. <laughs> oh yeah, very very well. And. Um, uh, there's only one or two places I haven't, I haven't. I've never been to Lublin, so oh, yet. So yet, <laughs> but I, I, I hope so. And of course, been to Warsaw a lot, mm -hmm. and I've not been to Nysa either, which I'd like to go to there because mm -hmm. I've got friends there. So, w w what about the atmosphere of, of Wrocław? Is is it anything special uh, about it? Yes, it, it has. Well, it has a, a historic. I mean, it's one of the oldest of. Um, of Polish cities, and it's got um, an extraordinary, uh, an extraordinary history. Some of which is quite dark and uh, <laughs> quite dark and brutal. You know, <laughs> yeah. there are lots of uh, lots of gallows and lots of executions and things True. going on. And uh, and of course, in in Rotswaf, there was one of the worst pandemics, one of the yeah. worst plagues of uh, of medieval times. But th there is a, there's an enormous atmosphere here. In fact. Um, for Christmas, I wrote a story called The Red Butcher of Wrocław. Oh, yeah. It's it's one of the two stories about Wrocław you already wrote. Yes, and uh, there will be more. And um, uh, I'm hoping to, um, you know, to hopefully actually set a novel here because I think mm -hmm. that would be, um, that'd be a really interesting thing to do. So uh, h how is it? Because I always thought that those creatures of the night or, or those, those, those dark stories are not connected with cities. You know, city, it means civilization, lots of people. So, so it seems 
not not s such a dark place. No, quite the reverse. I mean, yeah. when you when you see, I mean, the Red Butcher of Rotsworth story was actually based on um, very much on what happened uh, in Rotsworth during the Second World War. Oh yeah, and uh, you know tragic. some some of the worst and most horrific events that happen. I mean, obviously there are ghosts in the countryside. Everywhere you go in the country, in Poland, the bloody ghosts walking around. Um, <laughs> All right. <clears throat> which I've been told about. But, but I think most of the most dramatic and horrific events tend to happen in cities. And, uh, of course, a lot have happened in Wrocław. Um, Wrocław is, is, is also uh, a, a good place for uh, uh, finding inspiration in, in the street. Uh, for writers, so it seems we we have a Wrocław uh, famous writer of crime stories. His name is Marek Krajewski, mm -hmm. and he's using the city to to tell the stories. and And I wonder how it works with you when, for example, when when you go through those streets and you see something uh, interesting on the building, like for example the the, the stone head on the uh, wall of cathedral in in Wrocław. Do you already have an idea uh, for a story or is it like, mm, oh, that's interesting, but I have to make lots of research and and then it takes <clears throat> months to complete the story? Well, if you're thinking about a novel, obviously a novel does take months, but um, yeah. I was trained as a journalist, uh, as a newspaper reporter, and so I'm always looking for the possibility of stories. And the way that most stories, most good stories and most good novels work is for you to take one idea. So you, you mentioned the stone head. Yeah. Uh, you take that idea, but then you take another modern idea and you put the two together and that's how, that's where the story begins to develop. Because what I tend to do is take uh, an old legend or an old myth and make ordinary, up-to-date people, modern people, have to deal with it. I mean, because... Um, when you think about uh, this virus, it, it was only um, in about 1880 that viruses were first even thought were discovered. Yeah. And it wasn't until 19, I think it was 1940 or 1935, some, some time yeah. like that, when the first electron microscope mm -hmm. was devised that we even saw viruses for the first time. Mm -hmm. And in the centuries before, when there was a plague or an illness like this one, Everybody would just think it was witches or demons or, or something like that that was spreading it around. So what I can do is take that, that old legend, that old legend of the witches or the demons or whatever it was, and make modern people like you and me. Uh, not only do we have the problems of uh, our own lives, making our own living, uh, building, uh, renovating our houses like you are. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, and and I'd make just ordinary, everyday people face right. up to them. And I think that's how the story, that makes a story believable. And that's how, how the, the story really works. So, and, and what makes a story uh, a scary story? What, what this, because uh, people like to he hear stories about people. Yes, but uh, how, how do you decide that 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 suddenly you want to uh, put into the story something that is scary, and and what for? Do do, do people need such stories? Yes, you've just exactly you've hit the nail on the head. Right. Um, people do need stories like this, and people say, oh, some people say, oh, terrible horror stories, but there's enough horror going on in life anyway, in, in ordinary life. And I think when people, and in fact I know this, when, when people read horror stories and read horror novels, they, they do it, they enjoy the, the, the fright and the thrill and they, they recognize, they identify mm -hmm. with the fear that they have, the fear of something monstrous underneath the bed or in the, in the closet, hiding in the closet. Uh, I wrote a story once where all this woman could hear was the jingling, the jingling of uh, 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 the coat hangers, the wire coat hangers. All right. And so there must be something in her wardrobe. And so many people identified with that. They said, my God, that's just what I feel. The other thing that people, that scares people, is the dressing gown or the bathrobe hanging on the back of the door. All right. At night and they're in bed and they see it hanging there. 
and supposing it suddenly dropped off <laughs> and started to crawl across the floor. Okay. I mean, <laughs> these are just ordinary things, but people do have fears about them. And if you write about it, they identify with it. But the one thing is, as, and this is exactly what you said, the one thing about um, horror stories is that you put the book down and you're safe. Unlike real life. Right. In, unlike the things in real life, you know, you can't pay the mortgage, you can't pay the tax man, and you do get a serious knock on the door. Mm. Or, you know, you get attacked and robbed in the street or something like that. Or, you know, your marriage falls apart and you go through all the stress of, and strain of that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I... That's what I tend to write about, things like that. But things, things that ordinary people can... The fear that, or, and the stress that ordinary people can identify with. Uh -huh. But, but it, it, is it possible that you can uh, also learn something from a horror story? Because, for example, my, my, my wife is very into uh, romantic stories, mm -hmm. everyday life stories. And, um, and she says, well, I'm not going to, to read any science fiction or horror because this is just like a fairy tale. That's, that's not true. I, I can't learn anything from it. No, that's not true. I'm afraid your wife is, your wife is wrong. I mean, some, some science fiction, I mean, yes, is is a, is a bit nonsensical. Mm -hmm. You know, the aliens that uh, we've still seen, whatever people say, there's been no aliens have arrived yet. Right. Although um, some of our politicians look rather like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, it, it depends on, on what research has been done mm -hmm. um, in, uh, to write the horror story. Uh, obviously, when I'm writing a horror story, you know, I've done some research into psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done research into history. And, I mean, even with that story, say, The Red Butcher of Rotswaff, it's based on r real events that happened in Rotswaff uh, during the, the last stages of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And if you read that, you will know something that maybe you didn't know before about the history of the city. And also... Uh, the way that people react to um, to a very a very scary, uh, mm -hmm. very bloody situation. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot to be learned from horror. And you're writing for so many years, so many books, and uh, the world is changing all the time. Right now, the technology is like for me faster than ever. And 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 during pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. they say that it it become, became even more faster. It's still de developing. Uh, can, 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 you, can you still use it uh, as, as, a, as a writer uh, uh, who already wrote so many books? Uh, are you able to, to use all of those new things that are happening? Or, well, of course. Right I mean, I keep it up, as up-to-date as possible. I follow the news every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are lots of new stories. I mean, uh, for instance, it's not yet published, but I've just finished a, a novel uh, that's set in Hollywood. All right. And it is, it's got a bit of uh, Native American mythology in it. So the readers of them, those who like the Manitou will be pleased. Oh, yeah. but it's got a lot of that in it. Um, but it's also slightly based on the Jeffrey Epstein story mm -hmm. i have the you know changed the names to protect the innocent <laughs> but it's um it's, it's very much how hollywood producers and uh -huh. uh, hollywood moguls exploit mm -hmm. uh, susceptible and vulnerable young women all right that's the basis of the story but mm -hmm. they they also use native american mythology to do that i won't go into the, the full details you know mm -hmm. i won't do a spoiler but um It, it's, the story is called The Stealer of Souls. That's the name of the book. And it'll be out in Poland next year. So <clears throat> you're taking ideas from places where you are, uh, from people that you meet, mm -hmm. from history, from, from this what's happening right now. And what are you doing with all of those stories? Are you making notes like every day or do you have a recorder that we will finish up this uh, small talk and... Uh, in, in two hours, you're going to make notes. Oh, I have like 10 new ideas for... Well, occasionally, I mean, the best ideas that I have are usually when I wake up in the morning and before I get out of bed. And that's when the brain has been refreshed by sleep. And What, what time is it? Oh, uh, it's usually <laughs> about seven. All right. Like so, 
So just lie there for 20 minutes and think uh-huh. about what am I going to write today? Just in my head. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll make a few notes. Okay. Um, just I got a little book that my French publishers gave me. So I mm-hmm. just just one or two just to remind myself. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I go and have an extremely strong mug of coffee, which I call horseshoe coffee. <laughs> because well, that, that comes from the American railroad constructors uh-huh. who made themselves very strong coffee. And they say it's so strong that a horseshoe can float in it. <laughs> On only one. Uh, that yeah, well, well, it's a big one, and it's, and it's very strong. If I had more than one, I'd be going like this all day. <laughs> and 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 then, uh, then you sit to 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 write. Then I sit there and write. Okay. On my PC, uh-huh. and um, the ideas that I had in the morning, you know, I, I correct what I did yesterday, mm-hmm. and then I just go on and uh, and write the the idea that I had first thing in the morning. Uh-huh. Until maybe you know three, four in the afternoon, or maybe a bit later, depending what uh-huh. it takes, and uh, and then that's it. And what about the whole year? Because I, I know that that right now there are writers that divide year into two halves. They 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 have half of a year to promote books, travel, uh, meet people in different cities in different countries, and the second half of the year is for writing. What, what's well, know? I'm really writing all the time, uh-huh. um, and then if somebody, say my French publisher, who will ring up from uh, uh, Emily Ancio, will ring up and say, "Graham, please, would you come to France?" <laughs> and I say, "I'd love to." I, so I get on the Eurostar and I go to France and meet lots of French people, and then Empic, for example, mm-hmm. want me to do a tour of uh, Poland, and I go. But that's it's just in between books. Mm-hmm. It's like my halfway through a book at the moment, but mm-hmm. it's it's been a pleasure to stop for a while, and a great pleasure, obviously, to come back to Poland after such a long gap. <laughs> so, being in Wrocław, uh, are you going to have any free time, just like for you? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. And w- what are you going to do? <laughs> well, um, I, I've met Carolina mm-hmm. here from Nysa. And she is a qualified psychologist. All right. And we started talking online about the possibility of writing uh, a book about uh, marital and spousal abuse. Oh. You know, both psychological and physical. Mm-hmm. And it's a, a subject I've often wanted to write about and had thoughts about for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, But the great thing about Carolina is that she has case history experience. She's worked with cases of abuse, and she has she knows people who suffer from psychological abuse in a, in a in a marriage. It may not be um, actual physical blows, but it may just be you know a husband being being very bullying and expecting a, expecting mm-hmm. their wife to be a servant. So th- this kind of work, when when you need when you meet someone. Who knows uh, so many things? Who is a specialist in in, in this That's case? Right. For for example, mm-hmm. I, I, is it like you, you are connecting uh, a work of a journalist with a work of a writer? Because uh, dealing with such person, well, it, working it is, with it is in a way. But I mean, it's, first of all, we thought about actually writing a non-fiction book. Mm-hmm. But then I thought, no, this is. I know what's going to happen if we do that. All the experts in the field, you know, all the doctors are going to say, you know, there's a lot of old rubbish, you know. So we're going to do it as a novel. Mm-hmm. And we've already, she's already given me a lot of case histories to work on. Uh-huh. And we've talked about the characters that are going to be in it. And when I finish writing this book that I'm writing at the moment, which is a horror novel, mm-hmm. actually a, a sort of haunted house novel, um, <laughs> then we're, get, we're really going to seriously start writing this uh-huh. one. I think it personally, It will have enormous impact because I think it will. There's an awful lot of women out there, an awful lot of wives and girlfriends, who will recognise themselves in not a, not as I say, not always not hitting all the time, mm. but just that kind of um, terribly bullying sort of relationship that that the, that men expect. You know, men expect that oh, you do the cleaning, you do the house, you look mm. after the children. You know, well, I go, out, I'll go out and have a drink with with my friends. You know, and when I come back, I expect my dinner ready. Mm. And uh, 
but so many women are so, all my best friends all my life have been women right. and they and they, you know, they I find them clever they're intelligent uh, they're creative and yet so, so often they're not allowed to exploit that intelligence so uh that's another thing that you, that we can learn from your books and and from your stories. Well, you certainly will from this one, I can tell you. Uh-huh. I But mean even even from uh, when we've gone so far, you know, with the case histories that Carolina has given me so far. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, but <laughs> before you told me that story, I asked you what are you going to do during your free time in Wrocław? <laughs> and you said, "Okay, so I'm I'm preparing this book and I'm work, working on this and I'm working on that." Yes, but <laughs> Well, Caroline and I would be sitting down and, t- and talking about uh-huh. it, and uh, talking with her is free time. Right, we get on very well, and uh-huh. so that is to me is entertainment and relaxation, as well as being instructive and helpful in the preparation uh-huh. of the next book. Uh, do you have uh, a, a favorite or um, television or or a, a cinema production based on your on your books? Or maybe you like something, especially in this money too, uh, that we will be able to to see it in Wrocław. I think the, the Manus who they made they made a very good jo- job uh, at the time, uh, considering there was no CGI. Yeah. In those days, and uh, beautiful times. In yeah, a way. absolutely. The most dramatic effect I think in the whole film is they mm-hmm. blew up an IBM typewriter, <laughs> for real. All right. <laughs> um, You know, it, 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 it shows its age because of the, the production values, and mm-hmm. the producer Bill Girdler was uh, Star Wars had just come out at the time, okay. and he was very entranced by Star Wars. So you will see that the ending uh, has got a lot of Star Wars quality in it, um, mm-hmm. you know, which wasn't so much in the book. But um, what I liked about it mainly was the casting. We're very lucky with the casting to have Tony Curtis as the right. lead. Susan Strasberg was in it as the uh, as the unfortunate woman, but there was uh, Michael Ann Sara was the uh, Native American, and um, they were all they were all absolutely perfect fit, particularly Tony Curtis because he had mm-hmm. the, a sort of the sense of humour that I like to have in a horror book. He had that, and he had the same. He was perfect as the as the lead character. Uh, a few years ago, one of Polish publishers. Uh, Uh, b- b- printed again, uh, Manitou series in in Poland with beautiful covers and mm-hmm. and and the 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 the, the whole series looks uh, astonishing <laughs> on on the bookshelf. Uh, is is it like maybe you're coming back to those ideas sometime? Well, I'm asked again and again and again. You know, Harry. <laughs> Sorry, Ers- Harry. Ers- no, no, by 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 readers. Mm-hmm. They'll say I read the Manitou, and it was, of course, it was the it was the first yeah. Western horror novel published after communism. Well, sorry for me, it was yeah. probably I already told you that the first horror that I've read. Yeah, you know, in my which well, is for, for a lot of people, yeah. and there's still <laughs> copies of that original book floating around. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I had to sign about four of them yesterday. <laughs> Great, and uh, but um, yes, people ask me, mm-hmm. Harry Erskine was who is the uh, the sort of fake. Fortune teller in the story. People obviously liked the character, mm-hmm. and they say to me, "Can we have some more books with Harry?" I said, "Well, you know, I phoned him, and I phoned Harry, and he's in <laughs> Florida at the moment reading fortunes for rich old ladies." Uh-huh. And um, but unfortunately, he says there is no way in the world that I want to face up to this. Red Indian okay. demon again. So do you mind? Okay. But the rea- <laughs> I mean, the reality is that I like to go forward and advanced. As mm-hmm. I've said, I've just written this book about that's based on the Jeffrey Epstein story, mm-hmm. mixed with uh, some very up to date uh, uh, information about native, what's going on in the Native American mm-hmm. uh, problem in the, in California, and I, I like to do new stuff all the time. And mm-hmm. it'd, be, it'd be lovely to go back. People, this, uh, I wrote some book about night warriors, about people fighting demons yeah. in dreams. Mm-hmm. People l- like them, and they come back. When are we going to have some more? But I have to go on. You know, I have to <laughs> do something new. So. Right. So, uh, asking about those new things, and maybe you already have some idea about how to use Wrocław in one of your 
new stories that are somewhere uh, in the back of your mind? Well, there's so, there's so many. I mean, you've given me a, 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 some, a lot of background on, on all the stories there. I haven't particularly got one at the moment, but I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it's so atmospheric. Mm -hmm. Rotswurf is so atmospheric. There's so much history. And to have something, uh, some dreadful deed from the past discovered by some some modern person, mm -hmm. and then they have to deal with it in Rotswurf <laughs> would, would be brilliant. I mean, in fact, I'm thinking of its story already. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, by the end of this interview, I'll have the, I'll have the idea sorted out. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're counting on it uh, here in Wrocław, but of course... I, I guess all the readers that you have in Poland uh, are counting on, on your ideas connected with not only Wrocław, but Poland uh, generally, because uh, uh, you wrote uh, some stories about Warsaw as well. Yeah. Um, yes, after my first visit to Warsaw. And of mm -hmm. course, Warsaw was very different mm -hmm. then than it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really f funny. I mean, uh, it's, when I first went to Warsaw, Uh, people were selling their furniture on the street to pay the rent. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. all, all along Marshalkowska, there were they were they, they were sofas and chairs and things mm -hmm. like that, and people trying to sell them. And I remember the taxi driver in this terrible old uh, Zil taxi, whatever whatever they were, you know, <laughs> uh, with smoke coming out of the back. And he said, "Do you like the cushions in the back of my taxi? My <laughs> my grandmother she <laughs> embroidered them." You know. And, That's the story. Uh, yeah, but that was what it was like. And when I go now with with my publisher in uh, in in Warsaw, you know, Albatross, and I go to the, with the young the young woman who promotes me, I, I said to her the other day, you know, the last time I was in Warsaw, anyway, you know, people were selling furniture here. She said, no, "Don't believe you." <laughs> okay, so because uh, you look at Warsaw uh -huh. now, I mean, it's, it's like apart from all the tall uh -huh. buildings. When I first went there, of course, the Palace of Culture was the was the tallest building. And now I can go in my hotel room and look down at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that you will have uh, a really nice walk uh, through Wrocław today. Good. And that, that you're going to uh, see some old stuff around here. So I'm, I'm, I'm wishing you uh, lots of ideas after, after to, today's uh, another meeting with, with Wrocław. And uh, hopefully, uh, next time, uh, having already written book, we will have possibility to to talk again. Uh, so, well, uh, I hope we do. I'm, I'm going to try and stop me coming back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, please collect as many stories about Wrocław as you can, mm -hmm. and uh, we are very pleased to hear from you and and talk to you and and see you next time. Thanks, Lukas. It's been a really great pleasure to talk to you. As well. Thank you very much. Okay. Graham Masterton we Wrocławiu, który już za moment wyruszy na spacer po naszym mieście.